In this episode, we head out to the blue crater with lightning speed in order to start building our oil processing setup. Thank Coffee Stain Studios for the blueprint designer once more while placing 51 refineries, bring some packages to the party and much more. Yo! Hello everybody, welcome back to Prone to Play, a my let's play series of Satisfactory. In the last episode we finally decided to leave the desert and look a, bit, a little bit what lies beyond and went through the swamp to the blue crater. And in this episode we are actually going to start our setup for some oil processing refineries and more power output. But before that I decided to go back to our coal generator site where our current energy gets produced and I haven't been here for a long time and I decided to implement something that I have not considered to do until now. So before we head out to the blue crater let's simply do one little thing for preparation and I already prepared everything I just wanted to show you what's happening here because in tier 4 you actually unlock power storages which can store up to 100 megawatts um, for one hour as an output and they basically charge with overconsumption or overproduction from our power grid so we are going to connect 20 power storages to our power network and the currently excess um, power that we produce which is not that much at the moment but still it will add up and once we finish our next fuel generator setup we will um, extend our power output by a huge amount so these will charge up even faster and maybe they are fully charged until then anyways so let's hook up 20 power storages to our power network and you can see everything is charging up right away getting around 40 megawatts and um, it will take a little bit more than two and a half hours for every power storage to fill up so it might even be that this is completely full once we are done with our mm, fuel generator site but now in case we tip over our maximum uh, output of power with maybe adding some more power consumption to our power grid the power storages will kick in which was basically the original idea with our biomass generators but since we cut them out a long time ago we now had to think about an alternative and since we are producing a little bit of excess at the moment anyways I decided to implement these to our coal generator site Nothing crazy, but since I want to keep you updated about everything what's happening, I just wanted to tell you this right now. And with this out of the way, I will actually go back to the bases, do some more preparations, pack everything that will be needed in order to start our setup in the blue crater, and then I will resume to you. Alright, I prepared everything that we need in order to start our oil plant at the blue crater. But first, I have to show you something that I prepared beforehand that makes the travel time a lot shorter. Or way shorter? You know what I mean. Because we don't have any train set up or something similar, I prepared a hypertube cannon. To everybody who has not seen this yet, in this game we already used the hypertubes where you can jump in at an entrance and travel a little bit faster by using these hypertubes. And if you stack them close enough, like this, to each other, you can stack the momentum that you gain by entering these entrances. And by stacking enough of them after one another, 
you have so much momentum that you basically can fly <laughs> all around the map and the farther you want to travel the more entrances you have to um, you have to use for everybody who is interested in detailed explanation i leaned on a tutorial of toaster gaming links in the description as well so he really takes the time on in-depth explanation and how these work and um, what things to keep in mind while setting these up but let me tell you this was a lot of trial and error i once again took way more time than expected originally to set this up but this cuts our travel time to the blue crater from four to five minutes to about 30 seconds so all lights green save for departure and although these are 24 entrances I still have to slide jump into there in order to have enough momentum let me demonstrate And this setup was actually the only one that worked for me in order to get to the blue crater since we have to travel all over the map from the north all the way to the south and i would have preferred to stay closer to the ground where we can enjoy the landscape and the map but jumping this high was the only way that worked for me so yeah it is what it is and you can see that I already have been here a couple of times after our exploration in the last episode in order to get every necessary part over here some preparations already beforehand and I brought the last necessary parts with me as well so let me store these really quick should be fine and now, without further delay, let's get right into it. I prepared another blueprint with the Grip Metal Foundation, because I want to try this out for once. Um, since I used the Fixit Foundation so much now in this game, I want to use the slightly different Grip Metal Foundation and just see how it looks in the larger scale. Here you have the direct comparison of the Grip Metal Foundation and the Fixit Foundation. So let's get started. And this is our foundations completely set up, at least the first level. <laughs> so let's take this off the to-do list. And I think it's about time that I lay out my plan for this building. So I have not planned the layout of the building itself in general, but I prepared the streamline process that's about to happen in the future here beforehand and I will insert the excel sheets that I'm referring to um, each by each. Now for this or for converting crude oil producing plastic and rubber and having fuel as a byproduct in order to produce energy or power we have multiple different options. The first one is only considering standard recipes. And 
Given that we split the crude oil on rubber and plastic production evenly, we would have an outcome of 340 rubber and plastic each and 510 heavy oil residue as a byproduct. We could use this heavy oil residue then to convert it into residual fuel and this would lead us to having 340 meters cubed of fuel available. And in order, uh, or if we feed this into fuel generators, our output would be 4250 megawatts by using a little bit more than 28 fuel generators. The problem with this is that we use more than 1500 megawatts as an input in order to let all the machines run. So the net output would be something around 2600 megawatts only. There's also the option to convert the crude oil directly into fuel, which would give us around 20, 680 fuel, so double the amount, and then we could use the polymer resin, um, mix it with plastic, and oh, mix it with water, excuse me, and then have plastic and rubber as an output. But I don't want to mess with this because the goal is to have um, a big output of plastic and rubber, and by using polymer resin, we heavily decrease this output as well because we have another way more optimal option because I think it was in episode 7 or no uh, episode 10 or 11 we unlocked the alternate recipe for diluted packaged fuel and by taking 30 heavy oil residue and mix it with 60 packaged water per minute we get 60 packaged fuel as an output so instead of converting 60 heavy oil residue into 40 fuel and decreasing the volume by um, to 33%, we increase the volume of heavy oil residue by adding water, which is an infinite resource, by, uh, to 200%. We double it up. And all in all, this will be the streamlined process for the start, only considering diluted packaged fuel. And I did some research again because um, initially I would desire to have the um, diluted fuel, which basically skips the packaged process completely and only converts uh, heavy oil residue with water into fuel. You can see the alternate recipe for this right here to have the comparison. but. It's basically the same, we only have to add some packages and the empty canisters that we need for the packaged fuel, uh, for the packaged water and um, will be left over again once we unpackage the packaged fuel to have the fuel only. These can basically run in a loop, so we only have to produce these once and then we can let these run in an infinite loop, so this does not have to be uh, process part of this other than simply running in a in an infinite loop and by using this alternate recipe we have an output of 12,750 megawatts and can fuel 85 fuel generators with this so the net output from initially 2,678 megawatts increases to more than 10,300 megawatts which basically quadruples our output because we only need slightly more energy input in order to get this, but we have so much more output that um, the advantages outweigh the little more effort that we have by so much. Now, this is the first part of this project that we will follow, but wait, there's more because in the blue crater, the lo um, locations for the crash sites will not differ at all after update 8. So I think it's safe for us to pick up two or three 
um, hard drives around here because I know for a fact that there are plenty around here. And we need two more hard drives in order to unlock compacted coal and then turbo fuel in the MAM. And by unlocking turbo fuel, we can increase our ef um, effectiveness of our um, production output even more, or our power output. Because considering that we already prepared 240 compacted coal um, at max in our desert, setup a few episodes ago the setup is not finished but it's already prepared so the only thing left once this is up and running a little bit is to bring the compacted coal over here and with this the streamline process would look like this and by adding only 240 compacted coal using a little bit of the fuel of the 1020 fuel we can convert one third of it into 300 turbo fuel and the rest will be fed directly into fuel generators and this will increase the fuel generator amount from 85 up to more than 111. I think it's 160 more than 120 even with a new net output of 15,221 megawatts. Again the excel sheets um, I have showed one by one by now so that you can have uh, the or that you can see the exact numbers and ultimately the blue crater oil plant version 2 with the turbo fuel added will be the final setup for this plant and by this we first have to set up 34 refineries which craft or convert crude oil into plastic and rubber and in order to do so i prepared two blueprints where we set up the refineries face to face to each other and the fluid output will be directly um, on the opposite side so that we can simply use one junction in order to connect two refineries and have a clean look as well. So let's move on with the refineries for plastic and rubber.
All right. These are 51 refineries, 17 producing plastic, 17 producing rubber, and the last 17 produce packaged fuel by using an alternate recipe. And in my opinion, this is a very nice site. It's been a long time since I have planned and executed a bigger project since we were trying to stall time until update 8 comes live um, in the desert but it was the right decision to move on because this is so much fun and you can also see that I already hooked up some of the logistics um, the pipe management the conveyor belts at least most of them I have to color code them in between this and the next episode because I think I have to reload the game and see what color the um, everything actually is because the game does not seem to display it correctly but I also stumbled another uh, across another problem and that is that I actually have not calculated or considered that I need a thousand and twenty packaged water in this line which is way more <laughs> then one single conveyor belt can handle even if we would have Mark V unlocked. So it has to be split on currently at least three different conveyor lines because two would be not sufficient with Mark IV available and we have to think on how to do it. Same goes for the empty canisters as well. And although I can now take off refineries for the first floor at least of the to-do list, I don't want to deal with the oil extractors just yet, but instead I want to see on how I can maybe set up the packages. And also you have seen that I ran out of iron plates during the refinery setup. And that is why I went to the bases really quick again, restocked on some materials. And during that I also unlocked the Pipeline Mark II with no indicator in the awesome shop. Currently we have more than 30 coupons available again and um, this was the only thing that I purchased right now. But I really like or I really prefer the no indicator pipelines over the normal ones but this is just personal preference and not necessary by any means and I have not mentioned yet but this foundation is currently 30 foundations long and 15 foundations wide so we have 30 by 15 and again I have not planned out everything of this production building but um, I wanted to give me to give myself a little bit more space rather than not enough and as you can see the 51 refineries that were planned for the first floor there is a little bit of space left but then again if you want to move around this setup you need at least this much space and I think I will set up the first 17 packages for the packaged water on this area as well. But this is not planned for now, so let's actually do this on the fly together. And I'm missing steel beams for 17 packages anyways. In between episodes I will also produce the empty canisters for this loop. And I might also, what I have noticed um, at the basis, I might also have to stop the production of heavy modular frames because I'm running quite short on steel pipes and I don't actually know why because we only used 15 with the underclocked manufacturer for the heavy modular frames and I thought this was at least the output remaining at the steel factory but it seems like it's lower than that because the um, storage container is slowly but 
steady running out of steel pipes. And before I run out of them completely, because I still want to move on and build stuff, I might have to cut the heavy, mo heavy modular frames out. But then again, this might come in um, handy because I am intending to set up some supercomputer manufacturing. Anyways, so I might replace this, but I have not decided yet, just to catch you guys up. Alright, and now we need 17 packages. I should have used the blueprint for this. Just a second. Let's do this together. Now, we need... A packager. For packaged water. And then we have empty canisters as input as well as water. The water actually has to go from above. If I remember correctly, it depends on where you start the pipeline if you want to use. Horizontal to vertical. Also, this still has to fit here. Oh yeah, we can simply put a splitter and then put the pipeline junction above it. Or don't we? No, it seems like we can't. But maybe, oops, maybe we can cheat the system. By putting up a pipe first and then placing the junction cross. Just off center a little bit. Let's see, let's see. This should be fine. Oh, it cuts the pipeline automatically. That's the first. Okay. Let's color code it really quick. Water, water, water. And then empty canisters. Maybe with a dark. Gray. Maybe even darker. Yeah. Let's try this one. Select. All right. And the output, we can actually use mergers as well. However, I have not decided yet how to split these properly. So let's save it for now. Water packager. There you are, and safe. And clear. Take all, thank you. Alright, and now we have to put down 17 packages. Hmm. I have to extend the platform, I think. At least on this side. Don't I? Because I think this one is exactly one foundation wide, yeah. Square sized. 
What do I do? Do I set up two lines? Mm, let's extend the foundation for now on both sides. Because we have to worry about the water extractors anyways later. Maybe like this. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. And this is the best example for you can never have enough space because I built <laughs> the foundation platform bigger than I expected it to need and I have to extend it um, right away. But this is 17 packages and again these will handle the empty canisters in a loop or maybe multiple even, because I can't handle them in, on one conveyor belt either. And the plan is actually to bring the packaged fuel one floor above, because we don't have to, use, to deal with pumps or something, since packaged fuel can han be handled on lifts. And then bring the empty canisters back down here. And the fuel generators will be one floor above, but I also did some testing just right now um, with fuel generators and I expect the upper floor to be even bigger than this one because we need more than a hundred fuel generators or we consider to overclock them, but I have not decided yet on that either because if we overclock them, I will have to hunt down more power slugs. Because right now we don't have enough in order to overclock that many different fuel generators. But in either way, the upper floor will be very, very big and will contain dozens of fuel generators. This will be a very nice sight to see as well. Mm, no. Let me see what we can do on the logistics regarding the packages. I think I worked out most of the logistics for the packages properly. The water input is the easier part because we have 1020 meters cubed water necessary as an input for these 17 packages and I simply created two different pipeline systems. This one here includes nine of the packages and the other one includes eight. So on one side we have to do or we have to supply 540 meters cubed of water and on the other side 480. Yes. And in order to do that, we ha also have to s set up the water extractors, but we will do this in a second. And for the output, for the packaged water, I went with the following setup. This first packager is completely on its own. It's separated from the rest and its output leads all the way around the corner and to this first refinery which converts it into packaged fuel. And then the other 16 are split evenly so 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. These eight merge together to this conveyor belt, and the other ones, the remaining eight, beat this one so that this one is basically a one by one supply and then the following eight get their input from this conveyor belt and then the last eight from the third one. This was the cleanest solution that came up my mind and I have to work out a separate or oh, um, a similar way for the empty canister loop and that is why I extended the platform again so that the platform is now actually 31 foundations long. Because I have to work out some, I think three, yeah, three different conveyor lines again here with one being singular and then eight um, combined packages each for the empty canister input. But first, we should set down the water extractors, because um, the executing or the uh, empty canister loop only makes sense when we have added the additional floor on top and have the complete picture of what's really necessary for the logistics. So instead, I want to handle the water extractors now and in order to do that I want to add a walkway underneath this platform so that we can also walk around there a little bit. And although this is by no means copied, um, the inspiration for this walkway is actually a little bit from um, Total Exclipse because he just set up a similar not, yeah he just uh, dealt with um, a very big oil setup himself just a few days ago on youtube or i think it, it's yeah basically almost two weeks now but anyways it's not that long ago and um, the rest is by no means copied or anything but I'm still impressed by many of his builds, so I easily or gladly take this inspiration. Now I want to avoid the splash sound at any cost <laughs> when we run around this walkway, so we have to raise this as low as possible but as high as necessary, and I think this should be fine. And now we even could do one meter. Yeah, slide jump is possible as well. We still have to consider the um, stands, the pillars on the corners, and maybe further support down under later. But for now, let's do this and extend this all the way. Because I also intend to feed the crude oil to the refineries from beneath and using, I'm missing the word again, pipeline floor holes so that it looks a little bit cleaner from above. Mm, 31, 30, 29, 28. Yeah, should be, should be fine. Just so that it's not out of sight and gets forgotten. I want to build a square for now. Down here. Mm -hmm. And we can adjust it later because I think I will also set a separate walkway over there for the water extractors because I don't want to build them underneath. But first let me finish this loop really quick. Mm 
I'm missing concrete. Is this? Oh no, it's too low. Um, let me fix this really quick. Actually, the foundation was on the right height, but the start was too high, so I just had to delete the first attempt, so everything was actually fine. And since it was getting dark anyways, and I uh, want to avoid building during the night as much as possible, although I did the foundations in the dark, um, I only noticed on hindsight, I took the time to do some color coding above, as well as putting up the remaining three pillars, so that each corner is now supported by a big metal pillar and four frame foundations completely dragged down um, in a vertical way. And also we have this separate walkway now over here for the water extractors. And we actually have to set down 10 of them. And I have to admit that I have not tried out um, whether or not these fit in one line. But let's find out. How big are they again? Whoops. Two foundations. Uh, a little bit more. Okay. And we added another two, so this is 19. So I guess I have to go even further beyond. Um, let's do this for the start. Or maybe... Wait a minute, do I even need 10? I don't think so. I only need 8.5. So I could do one single water extractor for this one here. Which is then underclocked to 50%. And then we have two separate pipeline networks with four water extractors necessary on each side. And although this won't be symmetrical anymore, I think I still want to try it. Then let's start from the center actually. Um, although, yeah, there is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Yep, yeah, this is the center. So Maybe like this. And then like this. And then two, three, four. And four. And then there's one final one missing. Although I could also cut out the center one 
put one here. And then it would be symmetrical again. And then basically do this. Connect these again. Yeah, I think I'll try this because then we have a symmetrical setup. How does it look? I have to color code and connect everything. But yeah, I think this will be the setup for the water input for the packages. And the water pipelines are laid out. Now each side has, or each water pipeline network is now connected with four water extractors. The only exclusion is the very centered packager, which has its own water extractor. This one actually will be underclocked to 50%. And let's get some distance so that we get a better view. Mm, maybe up here. A little parkour. And this is our current setup. 17 refineries for producing plastic, 17 more for rubber, 10 water extractors feeding 17 packages and producing packaged water, and then 17 additional refineries that convert heavy oil residue and packaged water into packaged fuel. And this will be transported one floor up that we still have to add on this on this one and I think I'm going to call it a day here because I want to plan the layout for the oil extractors a little bit maybe put down some some extraction houses let's call it that way similar to the minor houses um, but I don't think it will be necessary to blueprint this since we won't use these as often. But I still want to plan the crude oil pipeline network a little bit because as already mentioned I want to feed this under the platform and transport this um, through floor holes. And also I have to do some calculations on how to split the crude oil up so that it will be fed evenly into these uh, plastic and rubber lines respectively. So yeah, much to do in between episodes again. Once again checking the color coding, checking that all the recipes are correct, that I haven't missed anything. And now all that's left to say is thank you guys very very much again for watching. If you have any feedback, anything that I have missed, anything that I could improve on, or even anything that you liked, let me know. Feel free to put it in the comments. And I hope that you enjoyed, and I hope that I see you in the next episode as well.